Labadieną tiek žinių kalba daktaras ir šiandieną laidoje yra Lietuvoje studijavęs Ispanijoje gimęs ir Italijoje dirbantis labiausiai nuo COVID-19 nukentėjusiame Italijos regione dirbantis Pau Mateo gydytojas. Buenas tardes, Pau. Labas vakaras. Kaip sekasi? Labai gerai, kaip jums? Pau, could you tell us, please, how your life has changed since or during last months, uh, since uh, post-lockdown period has started? It's a, it's a really interesting question and really difficult to answer because um, tonight, for example, I was, I was doing a night shift with, uh, I was working still at the hospital, still visiting some patients, uh, COVID-19 positive. And um, it's been like a roller coaster of emotions. It's, um, it's been really tough. I feel really, really tired and really drained uh, emotionally and, and, and physically. Actually, I cannot wait to, like, next week I'm going three days to the seaside in Italy. I cannot wait to just change a bit of, um, of, um, of the ambient of, of, of the place. But it's been, um, it's been tough. It's been tough. I've, I've learned so many things, just uh, not just medically, but also um, humanly and and about the, the rest of the people. And, um, and yeah, I think that would be the answer. Some people say that health system workers, as you are, uh, will feel a real impact on their own lives only after everything will end. And then and they will be able to sort of stop and uh, look back. Uh, do you share this point of view? Totally. I'm actually just uh, suffering some of this myself. Um, I'm, I cannot speak about my, my, my colleagues because, of course, it's their own private life. But me, myself, I'm now not anymore. I, I, now I, I can rest. But um, before, when it was uh, March and, and April, it was um, something that had never happened to me before. Basically, I was working in the hospital then I was going back home I was totally drained so basically I was just having a shower eating something going to sleep but then when I was sleeping I was dreaming about being in the hospital so it was like 24 7 thinking about the hospital thinking about the hospital remembering the faces of the patients remembering the, um, the sound of the oxygen uh, sounding non-stop which is like a non-stop and I don't know. I don't know. I know the, all the scenes that we have lived there. So yeah, I totally agree. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering them myself. Uh, Italy's health minister, uh, Roberto Speranza, said on Monday that the COVID-19 uh, epidemic in Italy is not over yet. But situation in worst hit region in Lombardy, where you live and work as a doctor, uh, situation is going uh, better every day, isn't it? No, no, definitely, it's going, it's going better. We we have seen in the hospital um, a decrease in the influx of patients. I mean, of COVID nineteen patients. We still, we are still an emergency department, so basically, there's there's never rest. And slowly, it's getting better. Um, people are going around in the street. We we can move a bit freely. We actually now can can move to one from one region to another. Uh, but. It's good that people are really mentalized about the fact that, that we should respect the social distance or more specifically like physical distance between each other. And every day we are using masks. So um, yeah, but it is not over yet. And I hope that at least uh, it's gonna give us a few weeks to rest before the supposed uh, second second wave that is supposed to arrive in, in autumn. Uh some people here in Lithuania uh, were and still are angry because of the need of, of uh, wearing those masks and using all the other personal uh, protection equipment. What about people in Italy? Is, is it easy for them to, to keep that social distance, which is not uh, normally seen in, in, in the streets of Italy? Well, um... I would say, from my point of view, from my six years that I, when I lived in Konas, that um, social distance or at least like physical distance would be a bit easier to respect in Lithuania, because um, 
you listening people are not so, so touchy between each other. You're not used to give to kisses, basically, maybe hugs and stuff. Um, here in Italy are, um, well, now I don't, I don't give two kisses to my friends anymore. I don't shake hands. I just say hello with the elbow, which is like a bit of a strange way to say, to say hello. But um, people are really mentalized because uh, from all the, from the governments and from the media and, and, and from the doctors, um, well, and all those um, health workers, we've been um, emphasizing so, so much on, on the fact that um, that is really important to respect this. And actually, we have seen it. We have seen that uh, when people were in lockdown, and thanks to the people being in lockdown, we we were able to to breathe a bit more in the hospitals, and 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 potentially save more lives. So people, I think that they are really mentalized and they really understand that they can make the difference. I mean, it's not that they can make the difference; it's that the society is the one that makes the difference uh, when treating this disease. Italy had the biggest fall in GDP in the European Union in the first quarter, along with France, uh, amid the coronavirus emergency. Do, uh, do ordinary people uh, feel financial difficulties already, doctors maybe? We are actually seeing um, a second wave also of um, uh, not, not only health workers, but also like people who lost their jobs. And uh, we, I mean, we're seeing a second wave of uh, psychological problems because many people lost their jobs, many people are in economical difficulties, even though the government is helping so much, even though Italy asked for some funds of the European Union um, to help recover a bit the, the economy, the same as in Spain, the, the country where I'm originally from. And, um, but also like um, people are, are suffering. Uh, also when, when some um, relatives, they, they died alone in the hospital. I mean, alone, we were there to, to help them and to, to accompany them in the, in the last minutes of their, of their life. But even though they couldn't say goodbye, so this is a really, this is a really hard thing. So yes, people are really um, um, feeling the, the economical difficulties. Um, we are trying, the people that we never stop working in this, in this emergency, to, we are trying to go back more to the, to the restaurants, to the bars, even though they increased a bit the prices to, to recover a bit. But um, in the end, we were the ones who, I mean, we the doctors, we are the ones who never stopped working. So economically, we were not in difficulty. And so I think it's also our time to, to give back uh, to, the, to the economy and to, keep the, and to get the economy rolling. Uh, Paul, what is your brightest remembrance from uh, memory from, from this hard period? What you would like to remember from, uh, from these days? that were very difficult? It's, um, well, for me, it's been a, a really emotional time. It's been really, um, every day I felt like kind of crying because I was really sad, but crying also because uh, every little movement was giving me so much hope. And uh, for example, when the, when the children, they were drawing, and they were making the, the drawings with uh, written Andra Tutto Bene, that in Lithuania would be uh, Viscas Busgere. It was like, um, I don't know, the, I remember there was this um, this drawing, um, I saw it once on, on, on Facebook, that it was um, a small kid that was drawing, that was drawing like, a, like a monster, which was a coronavirus, and then they was drawing like another bigger monster, but in white and blue colors, that was uh, medicine. So they were saying like uh, medicine beating the, the coronavirus. So, um, I mean, it, it, it truly really was like that. I mean, it, it, on, on the perspective of a five year or four year old child, but it was kind of like this. Also when, when the army, uh, they, they came to help us, uh, it was really, really emotional. And, and, and also when many of my colleagues from other regions, they were taking holidays from their ordinary jobs in, in different different hospitals maybe hospitals that were not so so hard hit by this um by this disease and they were taking holidays and they were coming to our hospital to work for free um i think that um as a, as a friend of mine also doctor she she told me um with this pandemic you i i got two things really really clear one that um this pandemic showed what people really are i mean people who are selfish they they were even more selfish and people who are generous they 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 show themselves as generous and um and people who and, and the doctors who made the hippocratic oath that i still remember 
that I did, that I did on June 2016 in Jalgir Arena when I was graduating from LSMO. I, I really felt the words. I really felt what I was um, what I was promising. I really felt that uh, those words that um, Hippocrates said thousands of years ago. I, I really felt them, and and you could really see in this pandemic who who was a doctor because they want to be a doctor, or who wants a do- or who was a doctor because uh, they just felt like being a doctor was was okay, and many people were not um, not helping that much as they as they could. But yeah, many 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 thoughts. Also, the patients they were not complaining. This is something I was talking with uh, with uh, my with my colleague tonight. That um, uh, I mean, of course, in the emergency hospital, it's really uh, it's a nervous uh, situation. People they have to wait some sometimes very long times, and sometimes people complain because they have to wait. I mean, they have to still understand that it's not a supermarket. That of course, if someone arrives uh, with this uh, with a more critical situation, we're gonna we gonna look after this uh, person um, earlier. The other people, we're going to check them out as well. But during this uh, COVID-19 period, when the, um, uh, when the hospital was full, and when I mean full, I mean the emergency room was full. And when I mean full, I mean that there was not a place for another soul. The patients were not complaining. They were not complaining. They were, they were afraid because you could see the fear in their eyes because they didn't understand. We were all like fully dressed you can only see our eyes so we were writing our names and then which position we were doing in the hospital like doctor nurse and they were not complaining they were not complaining and it was it was something really something something really different thank you very much Paul, for your time um i just would like to remind to our viewers that uh Čia jūs matėte Ispanijoje gimusi Lietuvoje studijavusi, Italijoje, Lombardijoje, pavyjoje dirbantį gydytoją Pavo Mateo. Ačiū jam, ačiū jums, kad žiūrėt ir ačiū už tai, kad remiat laisvės televiziją. Iki.